What makes a 3D model believable? After studying hundreds of images created by amazing artists, I've come to the conclusion that the secret to believability is to make an object look natural in its environment. And the easiest way to do this is to add environmental damage to the object, specifically at locations where we expect the most wear and tear. But keep in mind that we prefer to do all of this with minimal effort. So to minimize the effort, my goal is to come up with a procedural solution, one that makes a distinction between crevices and edges and enables us to apply different forms of damage to each of them separately. And I'm quite confident that all we need to get started are these four notes. Under the hood, the ambient occlusion node performs ray tracing calculations to determine which parts of the geometry are in shadow. This is an easy way to find the crevices of any geometry. The distance value on this node enables us to limit the max distance over which occlusion is calculated. Using this, we can set the size of the damage around the crevices. The output of the ambient occlusion node is a value between 0 and 1, which we remap through the map range node to prepare for the mixed shader node. The parameters on this node allow us to set the length of the transition between damaged and undamaged areas. Using these, we can adjust the sharpness of the effect around the crevices to either create an overall damage effect or something that is more localized. Last, but definitely not least, the Mix Shader node is what allows us to layer the environmental effect on top of the base material. I've chosen a red color here so that we can clearly see the affected areas which, currently, don't appear as natural as I had hoped for. I think we can all agree that the damage would look more realistic if it was spread unevenly around the crevices. What we need here is some randomization over the distance value of the ambient occlusion node. We can try to achieve this with the help of a couple more nodes, specifically a noise texture node and a map range node. The noise texture node generates random values over the surface of the model. These random values are then remapped to a more appropriate range to be used for the distance of the ambient occlusion node. The result of all this is the non-uniform spread of damage around the crevices. The parameters on these two nodes let us control the shape of the randomization to achieve different results. For example, we can generate environmental damage in the form of corrosion, grease, or just simple dirt. So far, we have managed to add damage around the crevices of our model. This turned out to be pretty straightforward with the help of the ambient occlusion node. But what can we do about the edges? One way to add damage along the edges would be the method I describe in one of my older tutorials. But that method doesn't make a distinction between the edges and crevices of a model and affects both of them identically. In my current attempt to find a better solution, while I was reading through Blender's documentation on the ambient occlusion node, I came across the logic behind the option labeled Inside. As it turns out, this option changes the internal calculations of this node to apply to concave regions rather than convex ones. With this in mind, there might be hope that we can reuse the ambient occlusion node along with the rest of the nodes on this branch to add environmental damage this time along the edges of the model. And there is only one way to find out. Here, on the ambient occlusion node, I will enable the two settings, inside and only local. And if we use a different color for this new layer, we get a better view of what's happening. The parameters are the same as the first branch of nodes. This means that we can change the size and shape of the damaged areas just as we did before. 
So it turns out that the ambient occlusion node is more versatile than we thought, and as long as we're careful to switch on the right settings, we can make any object look more natural in its environment. However, I should warn you that from a computational perspective, the ambient occlusion node is rather expensive, so to speed up render times and also have the option to export these environmental effects to other software, it might be a good idea to know how to bake a material into an image texture. To do this, simply follow the steps you see on the screen. Now if you want to learn more about procedural methods in Blender, watch this next video. As for this one, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.